So today I am going to talk about investing in seal boxes. Now these seal boxes came directly, directly 100% from Alpha Investments. So the person who sold me the boxes, he was at the $100 tier uh, of Alpha Investments. I bought the boxes around August of last year. I very much regret it. You can see the buy list prices. None of these boxes, I mean, I think there's one, I think Throne of the Aldrin, the very last one, none of these boxes went up in price. They all collapsed since that time. So I'm going to show you on TCG Player two things to really notice. Number one, the volume. A lot of these people have hundreds of boxes for sale. And one box sells maybe once, once a month, maybe once every week. There is not much demand, and for you to move, for me to move 20, 40 of these boxes is legit impossible. So, uh, this is War of the Spark, a box that many people thought would be very, very good. It has been on a downward spiral. So, I'm going to show you all the graphs. I, I realize that when I talk about alpha investments and these investments not being good, you have to see it for yourself. Now, 2012, I only got one of those boxes. You can go back to the beginning, see how many boxes I got. The only numbers I didn't left out were the other numbers. Um, and that's out of respect to the seller. Um, if he's okay with me revealing those numbers, I'm happy to. The numbers I'm showing are the numbers that Dave and Adams had at, as a buy list. And then their quantities. But then if we went over that quantity, we had to negotiate on the amount of money per additional box. And we had a tier system for that. Uh, these boxes have done nothing but drop. Um, I'm going to show you all of them. And... With the exception of Throne of the Eldren, they've all lost considerable amounts of money from about a year ago, which is roughly the time I purchased them. So the buy list price isn't uh, my buy list. It is Dave and Adams' buy list at the time. So if you sold it to Dave and Adams, they would have a quantity limit, and then they would also have a buy list. I was willing to buy them all. Uh, now, my tier system was slightly less money for each additional box over the quantity Dave and Adams was willing to take. And I got smoked like an mf -er. Um, You know, I look at these boxes and I don't see how... These are supposed to be the best boxes that Rudy Chan was selling. And the guy held the boxes... According to him, after shipping, so we split shipping. Shipping was about $1,000. We split it $500, $500. So in addition to the buy list cost, I also split the shipping on it. And I might make a second video about the collector's edition. So there are two things that were missing from this collection that I just didn't feel like. It was too depressing. It was A, the collector's edition that I purchased, which was also a lot of money. And then B, the Modern Horizons and the Eternal Masters, which has also dropped off a cliff. Modern Horizons 1 uh, has dropped off a cliff. <laughs> I mean, none of these boxes, you look at the graph and you say, you know what, I made a good investment. These are, so War of Spark, the buy list was 110, Dave and Adam limited to 6. I ended up buying 29 of them. Yes, uh, smart move. <laughs> Core 2012, buy list was 160 I bought one. Core 2013, buy list was 125 I bought one. Core list uh, 2014, buy list was 150 I bought one. Now, again, that does not include shipping. And that doesn't include wire fees or any of these other fees. So this is just the buy list. Then on top of that, there are fees, right? Banking fee, wire fees. Uh, I remember there was a wire fee. And then there's also shipping. So shipping is... Still quite considerable for um, this type of product. So Magic Origins, I bought one for 105. Core 2019, I bought one for 105. Core 2020, this is where it gets like derailed insanity. I bought 24 of them. And the buy list at the time was $100 and the limit was 7 So 
why did I buy 24? I, I could not tell you. Do I regret buying 24? Yes. Ravnica Allegiance, I bought 10 of them for 100 a pop. Journey into Nyx, I bought 6 of them for $115. And Rivals of Ixlon, I bought 6 of them for $120 apiece. $720. Rivals did really, really bad. Yikes. Um, Guild of Ravnica, I bought 11 for 100 uh, 1100 uh, Dominaria. Dominaria was selling for $170 buy list. Um, Dave and Adams limited to free. Me being the dumbass, I bought 10 of them. So... None of this stuff made after I sell it. Let's say I do sell it on TCG Player and it takes forever to sell, which they will. It's going to take forever to sell. And I sell it on TCG Player. I put in the work and the time and the effort. After fees, I'm out money. So I've calculated it. I've added the fees and so on. And there's no way I can break even from the price I purchased it. Now, if you're buying it for yourself to open, probably not a bad price, probably okay. Again, you have to add another 5%. Uh, let me see. Yeah, probably another 5% for credit for fees and uh, shipping. So, like, if you were to buy a box of um, Ravnica Allegiance for $105 to open, I think that's perfectly fine. But if you're buying a box of Ravnica Allegiance at $105 to to sell, there's not going to be that much of an audience. After fees, you're probably needing to sell at 125 and time and so on. Same with War to Spark. If you're buying War to Spark at 110 and you have 29 boxes of this shit, uh, how are you going to sell? I mean, there's just demand is not there. So it, 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 it is a good deal in terms of if you are a collector, it is not a good deal if you ever want to resell this stuff. Um, you can see that the prices are still okay. I mean, what were we looking at right now? I don't know what price graph this is. Yeah, Guilds of Ravnica. Um, you can see that it's Guilds of Ravnica. I paid 100. I have 11 of those boxes. Um, 100. No, probably more. I paid 105. Guilds of Ravnica. Wait, yeah, well, Guilds of Ravnica was also 100. Yeah. So I, let's say with fees and so on, I paid 105. Oh, Guilds actually has gone up a lot. Is that correct? Oh, free months. Okay, okay. But no, no. So the graph looks totally different. I forgot to do the one year. It must have collapsed. Yeah, at one point in time, it was $110. That's what, you know, after after my shipping and stuff, that's what I paid. What I'm trying to tell you is you can literally buy these boxes at the cost of ship. Now, of course, you guys probably want to know the, the answer. And I'm happy to provide this to you. Uh, did the person who sold to me make any money and he calculated it and he either made a tiny bit of money or no money. So I definitely didn't make any, no money because I bought during the height, right? So this is the height and you can see that it has just been a bloodshed. Yeah, like it has been, you know, it went from 250 to 190. Uh, Fate Reforged, which everyone thinks it's a great box is not i bought for 115 i bought five of them for 115 the dudes got um, them on sale with shipping for 134 uh, by the time i do shipping tcg player fees i so again it was a good purchase if you like oh but this is the chart for god's sake I mean, it's not getting any better i mean one of them sold for 131 it's not going to get any better. These boxes have not magically gone up in value. And you might be like, oh, these are reasons. No, these are older boxes that have aged, right? They have aged correctly. So I got my F. Um, now, I don't even know if this is the right box because I got these for 90. So this was like the only one good deal I got, I guess, that is like sellable. But I don't even know if this is the right box, to be honest with you. Um because there's like different versions of it. I have to check a little later. But yeah, basically what my conclusion is, you know, I'm going to conclude here. Um, Pharos, Magic Origins. I, I, I mean, the boxes did not go up in price. These bloody boxes that Rudy Chan taught, taught you to buy and of you holding it for many years, they have just, 
even if you bought the boxes at 100 from Rudy Chan, which a lot of these are at 100. War to Spark is 110. Uh, Magic Origins 105. Core uh, 105. Core 2020 105. Allegiance 100. Assuming you bought it at 100, you're still really not making all that much money. So that's the reality of it. Um, I will show you. So this is one part of it. The other part is specialty sets, which have done actually much worse because it's all Modern Horizons with a little bit of Eternal Masters. And then the other one would be collectors. You know, he's always pushing collectors. Well, what? Well, why don't we figure out what's happening with collectors, yeah? Anyway, I got mother effing burnt like a crisp, and I will never be buying these seal boxes again this way. Because uh, it's just not, A, the volume is not there. Maybe one box sells every week. Uh, so good luck moving your 29 boxes. And B, the boxes have been on a steady decline for over a year now. So yeah, good luck on that.